This episode of Kind of Funny Games Cast is brought to you by Blue Apron. Now, Blue Apron, obviously, we've talked a lot about them before. You know, Game Over Greggy himself, Greg Miller, big fan of his show on Instagram, Cooking with Greggy. You can find him on the little hashtags and stuff. He's a big fan of cooking and stuff. Blue Apron been really helpful with that because here's the deal. They send you little recipe sheets, all the things that you need. You can make each meal within 40 minutes or less. Tell me that's not a good deal, Kevin. It's a great deal. It is. It is. So here's the deal. They are the number one fresh ingredient and recipe delivery service in the entire country. It is their goal to make incredible home cooking accessible to everybody. And that includes me. And I can't cook. I haven't used it yet personally, but that's just because I'm just really not into cooking and stuff. But Greg, Greg's been loving it. Kev, have you used this? No, I haven't, but Paula really get wants to get it. Oh, we got to get it yeah. for Paula. If she wanted to get it, you can tell her she can check out this week's menu and get her first free, first three meals for free with free shipping by going to blueapron.com slash gamecast. No S there, just gamecast. Okay. Literally every time she asks, I'm like, let's do that. Okay, good. Yeah. Let's make her do it. You'll love how good it feels and tastes to cook using Blue Apron. Remember, again, blueapron.com slash gamecast. First three meals free, free shipping. We'll get Paula's review soon, and we'll let you know. Till next time, Blue Apron, a better way to cook. Next topic. <laughs> what have we been playing recently? Let's get some impressions going. Fuck me. Let's start with, let's start off with Mass Effect. Okay. Like, All right. You talked a bit about it last week. Sure. Yeah, I did. It was my review in progress and I was you know, and I'm going to play then, more. Da, da. You played um, all the uh, not all the mornings. That's the thing. It was like I we came back and it was going to be uh, you know, Mass Effect mornings here and I was going to play it all week long, right? Yeah, alliteration. Good. Exactly. Right. I think that's what I'm all about. And uh, the fucking PS4 fucking straight up died. Like oh, the really? day, like it just was like we we're playing it and we showed all these bugs and then it just went. <laughs> I was like, oh fuck! And eventually we got it back up and running. And I did the Monday playthrough of it, but it was that thing of, well, this is a story-driven game, but when you're streaming, you're not really paying attention yeah. to the story. This isn't working for me. And then during the down period, people were like, you should play Zelda. Mm. And I was like, you want me to play Zelda? So we've done Zelda every week morning since then. But the problem is, of course, when you put Mass Effect next to Zelda, you're like, wow, one of these is a masterclass in game design, right, and I yeah. fucking can't get it out of my head. And so like, I'm going home and playing more Zelda and not playing more Mass Effect. And this jumps into what we were talking about a second ago and the fact that what the way I have been justifying it in my head of the trade off, right? Because I, was, I I had played a lot of Mass Effect uh, going into the games cast last week, played more of it, then went to Edmonton for the heel kick stuff, mm. and I was like, I'm gonna take Zelda with me, obviously. Because and I thought about bringing the PS4. I'm like, I'm gonna bring Zelda with me because Zelda is my playing game. Yeah, Mass Effect's my home game. And now, as I've been playing so much Zelda and trying to figure out what I want to do, I think I have to at this point admit that Mass Effect's fine is what I said last week, right? Mm. Like Mass Effect's fine. Uh, I enjoy the characters and everything else, but I think my time might be better served playing Persona. And so I think I need to switch it over to Persona's the home game and mm. Zelda's the road game. So does that mean you're giving up on Mass Effect? Like, do you think you'll ever that's, come back to that's it? That's the question of, I. no, I don't think I will. You know what I mean? Because that's the thing of, I like the Rider characters enough and I like discovering the Andromeda Galaxy enough, but like playing it even that one morning where I was like, oh, here are all these bugs and that's really annoying and this doesn't feel, and it's just like that thing of like, again, where I, st where I was so... Not proud of myself is the wrong word. I was so happy to have called it in terms of when we, last week's on the, you know, I'm like, I, it's going to be really interesting to see what happens with the reviews. Yeah. I think it's going to get hobbled, but be not get hobbled to like six and fives. It's going to be, it's an okay game. It's a good game. It's a whatever. Mm. And that's exactly where this Metacritic is settled, right? And the problem is, in the climate we're in, that's not good enough. For sure. That yeah. is not good enough for me. To, I, I, I can't right now with... Zelda on in in my hand with uh, Persona in my hand with all this other stuff going on. I can't sit here and be like, yeah, you know what? Uh, I started Mass mm -hmm. Effect and I need to see it through. Like, it's not amazing. It's a good Mass Effect. Maybe one day I'll get back to it, but I doubt it. Like, I'm not. I like I like the writers and I like their story and I don't know mm -hmm. what I'm gonna do with it. I'm in. I'm enjoying it, but I'm not. I. The whatever I whatever I said in the old games cast three or four or five hours of persona I put in mm. are way better than now probably the eleven hours of Mass Effect I put in. And so and why not go and down? You could get away with that in a different Q one, and you could get away yep. with that about five years ago when there weren't so many good games coming out. But it's just like I feel like this is really horrible timing for Mass Effect. Where like this needed to be a very good Mass Effect game. And it ended up being a nah, and it ended up being an okay, okay Mass, Mass Effect, Effect game. game. And that's just like And that's the thing, is like I'm not trying to take away from because like what I've enjoyed about this 
it's been interesting us being on the outside now you being on the outside right. right of the review structure and that where you do think of what's the metacritic and what are we giving it and what does a seven mean and when you get away yes. from that and really see what an audience thinks of a game versus what critics think of a game and yeah. now to be influencers but look more importantly look out when i'm looking at like uh you know shinobi on twitter or i'm looking at mm. uh, britney Bromrocker on twitter and they're enjoying it and they've in like aaron porter our guardian from uh rtx, RTX. took the week off for it and he's right. enjoying it and it's like that's awesome do be you do you yeah. but it is that thing of like i'm enjoying it too but I'm not enjoying it enough. Whereas, like last night, you know what I mean. Like I need to. I want to do something. Not Zelda. I played enough Zelda. I'm too tired for this. I could jump in and see the Mass Effect story, but I'd rather watch a movie. And that, that's right. not me. I'm and not yeah, the I movie know. guy. And that, like that's the thing. So Andy Cortez, one of the biggest Mass Effect yeah. fans that I know. Mm. Like we've been talking. He was just like, yeah, man. Like I'm gonna wait. I'm playing Zelda. Like yeah. I, I yeah, want to yeah. play Zelda. I don't want to stop playing Zelda. I'm like, are you fucking kidding me? Yeah. Like this is supposed to be your game, and it's like that's not good when you know there's something that is. It's been this long. Like, how long has it been since Mass Effect Three? Like, that was two thousand twelve. Four years. Fine. I'm always right? bad at this. I, I think twenty twelve. Me and Colin were sitting on this one side of IGN that was not our final side. Naomi sat behind us, so it was when start started. When did start start? Yeah, twenty twelve. Yeah, twenty twelve. All right. <laughs> I love that you. That's why no, you I, gotta just time just go visual. Back. No sense to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I mean, it's crazy. Like, Mass Effect fans have been waiting for. But what's yeah, interesting Mass about fans. this is, and this is a sincere look at. Me, but this is always the weird thing, and I don't know if you feel this, right? Because your job's a bit different with the mm. documentaries. But a weird look at me and what I want out of games and stuff, right, is the fact that Mass Effect's underwhelming me, yeah. I, 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 but I like it fine, but not enough to commit to it, and I want to jump to the next thing so I have something to say to the audience about it. Right, yes, But if yeah, I yeah. didn't have this job, would I keep playing Mass Effect? If... Uh, if Mass Effect, if everybody was saying Mass Effect's amazing later on, would I keep playing Mass I guess not, because they said that about Last Guardian. I was like, fuck that shit. Right. Yeah, I don't know, but it is that thing. <laughs> and, that and I think that the, the problem with that is uh, is that the more people put it off, the more they're hearing that it's mediocre, yeah. and so that the the, the tail is dropping. Yeah, like, and, as is, that's and it happening. is that one weird thing of, and I know that this, and I, I said last, you know, that I'm investing these characters. I am. Mm. I like PB a lot. I want to see her story. I want to do their loyalty. See, I guess I will get back to it. Is PB <laughs> the really ugly with, blue looking thing? Uh, yeah, and Asari, she is, is not ugly. Oh, Asari? Blue, yeah, with the, the black uh, across her eyes. Oh, there's some character that I just keep seeing images of. I'm like, are you kidding me? If, <laughs> like, with this the, thing looks... <laughs> she's got, like, the squid hair, the black along her eyes, and a purple jumpsuit. Nah, suit. that's... You, she's, she was in all the trailers, right? Yeah, that's PB like, was in everything. That's not... Big Kev, dog. Can you, can you Google <laughs> Mass Effect Andromeda image search? Plus... And then pull it up on... on on the wall. Yeah, I guess it's just that thing. It's, it's when we when Mass Effect Mornings derailed because that was that my excuse to play video games this week, hmm. which sounds weird <laughs> with our job, right? My excuse to play was I want to put time into Mass Effect and right. I wanted, uh, but I'd, let's, let's make content out of it. Let's give me a reason to do it. Hmm. And then doing it and it not working the way I wanted and playing more mm -hmm. Zelda, I was like, well, Zelda's so much better. Right. Now go down. So down. You, you yeah, are talking. You're, you're that's right. That, that thing. That no, 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 thing? No, no, that's that her. Not, that's no, 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 her. Okay, have you played, that's, that's have you played a Mass about. Effect? Go down. No, he saw. Go, go down. down. I've never going. played a Mass Effect ever. Scroll down. Yeah, yeah, you are one. talking about PD one. right yes, there. But I want this stupid ass picture. Like, what's weird? What about it? Yes, I, it's, it's. I don't like it. If it makes I don't you, fucking like if it. If it makes you feel any better, the textures in this game aren't that good. That's not what she looks like on PlayStation Four. Click some of the other pictures. They're all the same picture. Thing. Now go to the other one to the right. Horizontally flipped. There is a gift. This one fucking moves. Put P B P E E B E E Mass Effect in the Google image search. Wait, you should have it all right here. Uh, you're not you, you're not gonna play it because you're a fucking xenophobic or something. You raise here. an interesting uh, question. Yeah. You raise an interesting question. Mm -hmm. Of I like these characters. Will I get back to it? I don't know. And that mm. sucks. I want to, but I already know that I like persona characters more. And that's been 90 hours of my life. Mm. So why invest another corner? Not what is that? That is a that is <laughs> that is not a real thing. That is not a real image of PB. Stop doing this to me, Kevin. You're putting oh, that is not PB at all. That is <laughs> that's upsetting. That looks like that's all. Is that Sean Spicer mixed with PB? It's somebody like that. Yeah. yeah. That's real Wait, what? Up. No, is PB Christine Lakin? What? Well, Kevin took it away, so we'll never know. Oh, sorry. <laughs> There's a lot going on with PB. There, there's a lot. The only reason I, I'm hating on, no. on, yeah. on your girl PB yeah. is uh, I have to make thumbnails for this sure. show. Right. So the amount of times we've talked right. about Mass Effect, yeah. I keep using the same image sure. of the dude with the helmet. Yeah, yeah. And like, there's there's been very few Mass Effect sure. drama images up until recently that are like quality thumbnails. Mm -hmm. Faces work well. So the amount of times I've seen that, I'm like, I'm not using this thing as a fucking thumbnail. Right, right. No, I don't like call. her. 
I'm, I'm so are you Next time you need to do sous vide. S-U-V-I. She's my girl. She's the one I'm All these romance. characters named after fucking food or ways of cooking. Or yeah. like shitty cars that no one buys. Jesus but yeah. Christ. Yeah. That, that, and, uh. I, and then it's just the fact that Zelda is too amazing. Mm-hmm. Zelda I mean, is I, too good to put down. There's also like some sort of remnants of what happened with Mass Effect 3 happening here as well, right? Where you had a lot of people who were playing that game, myself included. I actually never completed Mass Effect 3. I love that entire series. And I kept hearing about how the ending was disappointing. And much like games like Fallout New Vegas where I heard the ending was disappointing, I just kind of stopped. About 80% in, I was like, all right. I'll get it back to it eventually. Yeah, yeah. Like you're, you're saying. Never did. But you always know what that means. Like when right. I was like, oh, you know what? I'm not going to platinum Metal Gear Solid 5 during the extra right. live stream. I'll come back for it. Yeah, never. never right? <laughs> right? And what happened was I think people came in with this expectation, with this like just worry in the back of their heads that maybe this game, there was always an element of that with Andromeda where like they might fumble this like they fumbled the ending of Mass Effect 3. And I think mm. it confirmed it with some people and they're just going to See, what's pass. interesting about it is the fact that I don't know how much it was they're going to fumble it like Mass Effect 3. Mm. I think it was the fact of so many being like, they can't screw this up. It's Mass Effect. And right. so to get there and have so many weird, bu- like when we started the stream, right, Kevin, mm. those two guys were just like walking oh. in place. And you're like, this right. is like one of EA's premier franchises. Mm-hmm. So for them to get a game out that like clearly took a lot of time and not have it fucking be a home run is so weird. Or to yeah. even do that thing, just rush it out before the end of Q1 finishes to get the mm-hmm. quarterlies in. Like that's if that's what they did with this, then that that's really irresponsible. It's just not right? yeah, it's not a good look. Do you think that it's gonna do well specifically on the Xbox? Because while PS4 has had all these amazing exclusives, mm-hmm. there hasn't been like all the ga- games that we talked about, except for Resident Evil Seven, right, um, aren't available on Xbox One. So, mm-hmm. like, do you think that like those gamers are just gonna be like, I just want something? I, I mean, I think all gamers will. I I think this again speaks. I don't. It was a weird rollout, right? Of mm-hmm. The EA Access thing is always so weird. Yeah. And this time it definitely blew up in their face. Of, 100%. Here's a million gifts of faces being yeah. fucked up. And everyone's like, uh. But I still don't think people canceled pre-orders. I still don't think people, and I don't get me wrong, clearly people did, people but did. not a lot. But I'm not saying like where you're like, oh shit, we fucked. I think enough people bought this and then are like, I want to play this. I love Mass Effect. I mean, it's mm. similar to me of like Infamous Second Son. Right, like I'm this huge Infamous fan, yeah. And so Infamous Second Son comes out, and yep, I'm gonna buy it, and like you know, and it, I played it, and, I'm, and it's like, okay, cool. Like, this isn't amazing. It's good. It's more Infamous, and I'm sure that's how a lot of people feel. It's more Mass Effect. Mm. Yeah, it's rough around the edges. Yeah, it's doing this. But and this is the other thing too, similar to how we're talking about Uncharted One, Uncharted Two, is the fact that like Mass Effect One had its problems too. Oh, well, yeah, elevators totally, yeah. and all sorts of garbage that in like just weird stiff animations, and then Mass Effect Two I mean, was the little, combat. Even, yeah, just Mass thing, Effect Two know. was fucking phenomenal, and yeah. that's where it really pow became this giant thing where it was everyone has these fucking Mass Effect N Seven shirts mm. and tights, <laughs> but they can't make an Andromeda Two like that. You don't think so? No, they totally will. They totally will. They've already said they did not commit to this being a, a, a trilogy already, and they did say that this could be a standalone sort of mm. story that was going on. So like. I don't know. I feel like already coming out, Mass Effect had a little bit of dirt on it coming out of three. And sure. This, sure. The, now it's now it's starting to have a lot of dirt on it. And I don't know. Like it's fine for people like us who we're not we don't care about that necessarily. But in the court of public opinion, I feel like having a toxic name is really dangerous for a game specifically. Mm-hmm. That's a good so, point. I don't know. I mean, yeah. It, it but breaks the, my heart. Yeah. I wish I loved Mass Effect. I wish I couldn't put it down. But it is a game that I'm like, oh, I enjoy this. I enjoy the. I stand by everything I said in the review. I enjoy the rider characters. I enjoy the cast. I do enjoy scanning and getting better weapons and stuff like that. But mm. it is just the thing of like, I don't. It doesn't. I said, you know, the third night was where it clicked with me, where I was like, this is okay. This is Mass Effect. That's Fucking it. Fucking alien. Is that what happened? No, I wish. No. I was working that Suvi girl. You still haven't got an alien? Well, no, because I still haven't played that much. Like, you know, Mass Effect. I mean, you don't know how Mass Effect is. You have to. You, you commit. <laughs> it's it's rare that you you're yeah. just like fucking bang and bang, bingo bingo right away. Oh man, you got to work up to it. Life. You do their loyal. Yeah, you got to talk to them. Mm-hmm. Ugh, let me oh, tell you. Right. Got to pick the hard gotta options. Got to treat them right. What do you got to say, Garrus? Oh, yeah. shut up and fuck me. You know what I mean? <laughs> That's all I kept thinking. But Lord. what it happened, Kev. Look like a cricket. He looks like a cricket. Kevin's never fucked a Russian alien. He doesn't know. He doesn't know anything mm-hmm. about it. Uh, yeah, I, I want to. I want to see it through, but I feel like I need to. I feel like I need to mosey on out because yeah. we are in that place where it's just like, do I have yeah. time for this? So what else have you been playing? Mm. Can we talk about Horizon Zero Dawn a little bit? Sure. Oh, of course. We are big Horizon Zero Dawn fans. What the Kevin, fuck? Kevin, actually, happened? get on your mic. You've been playing a lot. Of, you played what a lot last the night. Fuck. Did you? Where yeah, are you dude. right now? Um. So I've cleared the whole right side of the map. I, okay. I'm, I'm not doing like. With these games, I can't just do story missions. Like I have to Good. go around clearing as much as possible, and I collect whole, those cups. Yeah, the whole right side's all cleared. <laughs> yeah, and I've just started opening up the rest of the map. So I mean, I've got so many days. 
I, when that game, when I finished playing that game, I was look. I got the early copy, as I'm sure you guys got from from Sony. Yeah, like a good two weeks probably before it came out. I think I played it like almost nonstop for like three weeks. But when I finished that game, I was sad. Yeah, like I enjoyed my time in that world so much that but and that's how I feel about Zelda right now. It's like yep. I don't want. I'm just I'm enjoying every single moment. Of I have it one divine be- one divine beast left. Right. And it's like, oh man, it's getting yeah, close. It's just it's wait, right? Oh, no, I don't even talk. I about think right. Like I mean, the whole and I like Killzone, but the entire time I was playing that game, I was like, I cannot believe this is a game yep. from the Killzone. Oh my god, like, this that, is like, that's the biggest thing. It's just is, like that is it's one of the such best world games. I and played. Killzone's fine. Yeah. But like a totally different craft when it comes to making games. You were talking about a linear like first person shooter. They had corridors. Really good, Here's what we're doing. Is Killzone yeah. great? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Killzone two is great. Killzone. I, I like Shadowfall and I like three was that had that weightiness to it and that was that was fine. I liked it. Shadowfall I thought was where they got the like stickiness of the guns right, mm. and I think that comes across in the combat of Horizon because Jesus is a lot going on in the combat that, of that game, but yeah. it, it works like the slow mo with the like yeah. with the shots like being able to tumble out of the way the way the camera operates the and melee stuff works like all of it is so tight. That's a great point and that I haven't actually thought in context of because you know of course everybody wants to go oh well what about Zelda what about Horizon compare right. and make them fight and I hate doing that because I do think they're different games yeah but a great one of the reasons I love Horizon so much is that I felt empowered when I was fighting and it didn't feel clunky and I didn't feel like right. I was fucking up. Whereas today I'm doing this boss in Zelda or whatever <laughs> on the stream and it's just like one of those things of like, oh fuck, he's, oh, why, oh right, because I had my, I had draw, I was using my bow and arrow last so I didn't mm-hmm. have my shield mm-hmm. assigned where uh, you think it naturally should be. You know what I mean? For me, the lock on shoulder button should just be, right. I have a shield no matter what. And yep. of course that's not how it is. So I have to switch this, do that, blah, blah, blah. The, the dance in Horizon is like, as good as I have ever played in a game. The combat dance, the, like, it reminds me of games like, remember Stranglehold? Yeah, like, yeah. Where you yep, just, yep. you enjoyed, like, jumping and, like, but going uh, on carts yeah, and yeah. down. Like, Horizon, when I get into a fight with something, I'm not, like, worried about it and, like, trying to make sure that I beat them. Like, some of the big boss fights are certainly like that, but, like, the beauty of just, like, everything down to the sounds those fucking mm-hmm. dinosaurs make or when you're knocking off, like, little parts, parts of them of it, yeah. and, like, the way they, like, like buckle on the knee when you hit them the wrong way. Like, everything about it is just That, that was the masterful. thing for me in the combat of, like, getting, to, you know, I'm a huge Freedom Wars fan, right? And right. if you ever played that, but it is, like, sawing off specific things. Yeah. And so when eventually get, the game gets complicated enough of, like, well, if you shoot off his disc launcher, you can use that against him. I'm like, oh, yeah. fuck. And, like, you're, so you're lining up shots and taking up specific things rather than in the beginning where you're just like, pop, 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 yeah, whatever. Anything. Yeah, you we've ha- talked about this a million times, but the polish hmm. of the game, and that's just not it's visually and, and, like, just with the world, but with the combat, where it's just, right. like, it does feel right. And, like, I, the sliding mechanic, when I first saw it oh, when I was gosh, watching you play, I, I was like, this is kind of weird looking. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. so like good. excessively long, but it's, like, it feels right when you're playing it, yeah. and when you're fighting and you slide, fucking pop a motherfucker, slide yeah. again, pop. It's just, like, it works. And uh, even just, like, the little details of, like, her hair color matching the... Um, the the color of the grass, the crops, the tall grass. Yeah, yeah. That when you go through, it yeah. feels like you always feel like a badass mm. in, in a way that I feel like games often strive to mm. make you feel like, and it's always kind of forced and fake. Whereas this is like, nah. I'm the fucking predator here. Empowerment right? again, and, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, where you feel like you're in control of the situation. And it's not that, oh man, these clunky controls or this weird thing. No. To, yeah. And you're you're in control of it and you're the one in power, but it's not that the enemy is weak. And I think a sure. lot of games, you just no. feel like you're overpowered. You can come in and just attack them. And it's them. not that you have a bunch of equipment. You There's a genuine feeling of, and I mean, this is like, the, the I mean, it's, people compare stuff to Dark Souls all too much, right? But like, there's a genuine feeling in games like that where the mastery of of the character is what makes you stronger. And when you're playing as Aloy at the start, you're literally playing as a little girl, right? And you can only do a certain amount of things and you don't have that much skills and all that. As you're playing that game, you're getting imbued with so much knowledge about how everything works, about the grass, about the different types of animals, the way they react and all that, that by the end, you're throwing yourself into these combat encounters and just like, not because she's got bigger guns, not because you've got like more inventory, all that stuff helps, but like because you're you're just you've mastered combat, yeah. you're able to just destroy these things. And the, the, like it barely drops any it barely has like any problem. The combat's amazing. The, it looks amazing. It look like graphically it's incredible. The story's great. Yeah. Right? Like the story's the really good. Great. The that was the, the voice most acting. unexpected thing for me was right. that game. When I came back from that preview event and I was like yeah, I knew. I thought combat would be fun. We've, we've played it before. Yeah. But like to come back and be like, I can't wait to see where the story goes. Like yeah. I was, And then the fact that, no spoilers, when you start it, like, there becomes a point where all of a sudden there's two fucking stories and both are fucking fascinating. Yes. I'm like, all right, I want to know that, but I want to know that. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, I love it. And uh, unlike you guys, I 
don't really like the whole open worldiness of it all, and I don't right. want to clear out the entire map before. I was like, I just want to, I just want the story because <laughs> I, I liked it so much. And I was like, I want to keep this going, mm. and so I played it more like an Uncharted game where I just went from main quest to main quest, mm. and I had such a damn good time with it. Right, and it's like I now can go back if I wanted to and do yeah, all those more content, other right? things. And it's that's like, why it was so exciting when they announced the sales and was like, yeah, we're doing a story expansion. Yeah, like fuck yes, <laughs> fuck yes. So, There's oh, so man, many weird it. parallels. It's almost like training wheels for Zelda as well because not only did it have like you know all of those sort of collectibles and whatnot it even has down to like photographs of yep. places that you stand it's like yeah, ridiculous yeah, yeah. like it's weird that they came out so close together and that super, they are totally. so similar yet so different so yeah. different in the way that i get different experiences and different vibes from each one of them they're like distant cousins or something yeah. and even the way like uh, it's it's a thing that i've now like to do now that i'm out of the industry a bit more is like just try and not look at traders all that much if yep. I can get away yep, with yep, it. Yep, yep. And like with Horizon, I went in with zero expectation, but also like I didn't know about all the different environments and like all the, like even the way they handle towers. Yeah. Like yeah, 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 everything yeah. about that game, just they put in that little bit more effort than it really shows. Yeah. And that's yeah. what's, and I'm, I, you know, I've said it before and I'm so happy to see a payoff because again, I, you know, I've covered PlayStation forever. So to yeah. see Gorilla get that. And that's what I kept saying. I said it in our review, right? Of like, this is Gorilla's moment of going from Jack and Daxter to Uncharted. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, mm -hmm. you are on another level. Yeah. Holy shit. You've suddenly gone up so much further in the ranks where maybe you didn't like Killzone. You liked this little bit of it. You thought it was beautiful. You know, there's different things, but here's a package. Mm -hmm. Here's a complete fucking package. I would love to know the story behind this because I bet that they were being asked to make Killzone games for Sony for a long sure. time. I bet when they finally got around to making their own new IP uh, in Horizon, that they decided, look, we're not going to fuck this up. Yeah, we're we got We got We're going to. We're going to kill it. Well, we I mean, you know what's so funny is like when we used to, as IGN, go to GDC and report on panels. Right. Right. Like just you know, cover these panels. <laughs> I did the report where Gorilla was up there talking, and I forget if it, it must have been after Killzone Two, maybe right. Killzone Three, but it was like, yeah, we're working on three different games right now. We had a game jam, and we pitched this thing, that thing, and they had like not concept art, but something that hinted at all of it. Right. And it was weird to think that since that long they've been working on what Horizon was going to become. Wow. That's Come, nuts. Comes across though. Yeah, yeah totally. What, what else have you been playing? Wait, you beat Zelda, right? Yes. Well, so I wanted to end on Zelda. La, okay, my apologies, la, 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 la. my apologies. Yeah, but uh, so did, you were talking about uh, Night in the Woods. Night in the Woods. Yeah, played oh, some. Yes, please. God. Finally got around to playing some Night in the Woods. Uh, it's a very different um, uh, pace, and also uh, just you know mechanically, it's not a game about achieving much. It's yeah. like a. It's really hard to explain, and that's a good thing. I think it. It looks like a two D platformer. It's not. It's. It's a. It's not a platformer in terms of like, there's no difficulty to it. There's nothing like that. It the is way a story-based game. They yeah. had reached out to me a long, long time ago. And we're like, I forget if it was not this last GDC, but maybe a GDC before then, maybe Pax before then. are like, mm. we know how much you love Gone Home. Yeah. This is a similar thing to that. And I was like, oh, awesome. And I clicked on the trailer and it's 2D fucking cat man walking around. Yeah. Like, the hell is this? <laughs> Anthropomorphic cat girl. And like, you're in this rust belt, you know, town with, you know, massive social immobility where you're going back as somebody who's like kind of dropped out of college and all your friends are still there and dealing with like the relationships of people's expectations of you against like, you know, their sort of dreams for their own future. But all told, like, the thing about Gone Home is that like, I really, really like Gone Home. But Gone Home, the way it looks, I mean, people used to think it was a horror game before they yeah. played the first hour or whatever. But the way it looks is the way it is. That it is a story about, like, this sort of, like, uh, stylistically it matches with the theme of it, right? And I think what Night in the Woods is, because they go for this, like, cartoonish, anthropomorphized cat animal situation, it kind of takes the, the serious uh, sting out of it. Mm. So you can sort mm. of enjoy it. You So in a way, that, like, the, the way this... The story, the like super sincere story, comes across um, uh, even more sincerely. I think uh, it's basically a story about you interacting with people who you spend time with, um, talking to your parents in your house. It's the type of story that if like I feel like there's something in here where you could personally connect on many different ways, depending on if you've left your hometown, for instance, sure. or if you had trouble in college, or if you had friends who you grew apart from in your in your early twenties. Uh, yeah, and and I kind of don't want to say anything else okay. because it's all about it's all about enjoying the story. But it's, it's great, well, super polished, really well written. When really, I turn really well when written. I turn on the PS4 to for recently jumping a Mass Effect or mm. whatever, I see it there. I'm like, fuck, I gotta yeah. play that. I gotta make the time for it. It is a game that you should make sure you're ready to play it, okay. and then just do it in like a couple of days. Okay. Mm. Like just burn mm. through it. It's a yeah, it's a really special game. It's totally different to everything else is at the moment. So it was a little bit jarring, yeah. like going from Zelda and Horizon into it. Uh, but it's uh, yeah, very very well made. So then Zelda. 
Oh, fuck Update on where I... No spoilers, obviously. Okay. So I did beat it. I don't know if we talked on Gamescast Ooh, about that. We haven't. That. What's beating Zelda? Uh, Do you I have all it. of those little fucking... Calamity <laughs> Ganon <laughs> has fallen. You found me. Calamity, Calamity Ganon has has okay. fallen. Yeah. Um, and I'm, I'm very satisfied with, uh, with the overall experience. I mean, man, it is definitely one of my favorite games of all time. And I think that it always wow. will be. Mm. I think that we're going to look back on this game and everything I've been saying about it still remains true where in 20 years we're going to talk about I remember where I was playing Breath of the Wild. Right, I remember what it did differently. <laughs> but I mean, you know, all the I will remember the plane rides. Beside Danny and Tim, also <laughs> playing Breath exactly, of the Wild. Exactly, exactly. Like, like doing doing all that. Like the, I will we mentioned you. that. Yeah, we haven't yeah. mentioned that. We were all in the. It was you, me, Tim, Nick, and all in one row on a plane playing Breath of the Wild. We did not plan it. I literally booked the middle seat because it was the last one left. And then who the fuck sits down next yeah. to me except you? It was amazing. Fucking amazing. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And we played the entire time. That was your first. You started the game there. Yeah, I had not played it. Yeah, yeah. so that that was that was a very five game. hours to Boston, five hours back. All I did was play Zelda. Yeah, and it's I mean, and the time freaking flew yep. because of that. But yep. looking back on it, I do I do want to do at some point. I don't know when. Uh, I want to get some guests on and do a proper like mm. real oh, spoiler, spoiler cast? real nice. critical uh, thing for Zelda because I feel like it deserves it, and I I do have a lot of thoughts on it now, and I, I think that it as perfect as it is, and as like uh, as much of a masterpiece that it is now that it's done, quote mm. unquote. I do have a lot of thoughts where I'm like, I have ideas for how they could have improved, and I think right. that that's part of what makes it special, though, is that. It, despite all of those things, sure. I still think it's fucking amazing, mm. you know? Yeah. And uh, again, it's the same way like with Ocarina of Time, you can look back on it and just be like, mm, well, they could have fixed this. Nah, it's fixed this. <laughs> no, but I mean, it's it's not nowadays though. I mean, you're playing Ocarina of Time for the first for time. For the first time. What the fuck? Yeah, I'm, I'm not that far. Um, I've just completed Zora's Domain, I guess that oh, was nice. part of it. Um, yeah, I'd never play. I, so I have no affinity for the series whatsoever. I played uh, Wind Waker when I got a GameCube. That was the first Zelda I'd ever played. I have never completed one. I probably didn't oh, play wow. That to about 20 25 percent um i'm playing through ocarina of time at the moment and just because it's a massive gap in my video mm. game history um so i have no affinity for that whatsoever for these games but i like i needed some time to like make sure this this was the case this is like genuinely one of the best games i've ever played yeah like it is a masterpiece and i mentioned it in the last segment like it feels to me like an immersive sim those types of games where you've got all these mechanics and they have thought about every single permutation that's possibly there. Like, just using the cooking as a microcosm, the fact that you can combine all of these different things to make, like, I, I keep finding GIFs on Twitter that I'm, like, trying to not look at of, like, all of these interesting ways of combining recipes together. But you put that into, you know, the first time you figure out that, like, the fire lifts you up you know, yeah. with your with your paraglider, yeah, right? Like, to trying to get into different into different areas, to combat mechanics that you didn't know worked. It's just this constantly, like, unraveling world but it's not doing it in an artificial way where they're mm -hmm. tutorializing mm -hmm. or where they're, like boats man like i didn't figure out how to use boats until yesterday i still I, have i've it. never used right. a boat. Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah and it's i was waiting i have an idea yeah for how it would but work. i was waiting for the game to like tell me like oh, the yeah. pop-up to say oh yeah, the, yeah. oh oh you're you this is a boat to use the boat you do and it's that but for like literally most of the mechanics of the game is a little bit of hand-holding at the start where they need to tell you how to use the buttons. But, but like even me, just apples, right? The, you walk out, there are apples on a tree. Figure it out. Yeah, exactly. Right? My my thing, and this is a critique I have that is really, it's not spoilery. And at mm. this point, like for people that have played, you should have at le you should at least know certain things about the game. For me, the divine beasts are the, the thing that I do feel get a little bit too hand-holdy. Right. And they're not at all. But there's a moment where with each beast you get in and they're like, there's go. a map. You need to go. You need to the find map the map link. to unlock the area. And they do that. And it's weird because it happens four times through the game. And every single time it has, there's still characters. So the, it's not line for line the same thing. But they're telling you the same thing. Yeah. And it feels weird to me because they obviously did that so that you can play in any, any order you want. Yeah. Hmm. However, it's the only time the game holds your hand in any way, which so makes jarring. it stand out yeah. even more. Right. You know, and I'm like, why would why would you do that? But it's like that's such a minor thing mm. yeah. to complain about. It's and just, I'm excited that there's DLC. There's a story yeah. DLC coming. Fuck it's yeah. so crazy that we're, you know, this many weeks in, right? How many weeks is it? Because I, I feel like it's been a month and a half, but it's just been well, a long It's month. been three Two? weeks since it's been, been, been three. Oh, yeah. wow. And really the fact wow. that like every day on Twitter, there is a yeah. new GIF or yeah. a new comment where you're like, what? And even today or yesterday when we did the island, I did a event tied island. Right. I just yeah. did that last night yeah. after I saw you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it was that thing of like, I was like walking Kevin through. I'm like, I know where everything is. Move on. I'm like, I need to get this ball over there. I'm going to, and I threw it in the water and then I used the ice to bring it up. Oh, that's how you did it. 
And somebody in the chat was like, oh, I never did that one. I'm like, that's so fucking crazy. Did you so do that? Crazy. I didn't. I haven't done it yet. The, did, the can you guess how I did it? No, the guy in the chat said, I already forgot. What did you do? There's a rock right on the edge that's yeah. kind of ramped enough. Yeah. So I put it there, froze it, hit it a bunch of times, and it just went... Whoosh, Nice. Like golf Very shot nice. yeah, into yeah. it. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's awesome. And I, I love seeing it because, again, I do think that there it reaches a point with this game where for a while it was like, I don't want to see anything about this yes. because I want to experience it for myself. But you reach a point where you're like, all right, cool. I've played enough. I'm kind of now there. I want to see all the cool yeah. shit people are doing. And again, I, I brought this up in some other show. But uh, Breath of the Wild reminds me of Star Wars Episode Seven in a lot of ways where <laughs> okay. I was I was so excited for it. And I was like, I want I want to know. Just enough. I want to see a trailer, right. but I don't want everything spoiled for me. Don't fucking tell me anything. I want to watch the movie and I want to, yeah. you know, experience it myself. But then it reached a point where after you see the movie, I was just yeah. like, tell me fucking Flood everything. Yeah. I want to know every Easter egg. What stormtrooper was played by which actor? Yeah. And like it, there's like a second wind yeah. of I want to know everything. And granted, watching movies is different than playing a game. But what I'm saying is, I feel like with Zelda, you hit a point where you're like, there's that second wind where I'm like, all right, now tell me everything yeah. I don't know. But you reach I see the, gifts of people doing things that are like. And it's, it's funny because with Zelda, it's the one game where it's not breaking the game. It's no, you could solve it that way. Yeah. Like, did, have you guys seen the thing with the, the magnets? Nick, Ro oh, no. Nick Robinson's Nick thing? Nick Robinson. Yeah, I, I literally. Not the magnets, electricity. Well, electricity? Yeah, electricity yeah. With, through the, the metal. I literally yeah, yeah, did the same that, thing. Well, that was one of those gifts where I'm like, you son of a, what a, right. and it works. It totally fucking, fucking works. works. Yeah. It's. We don't, yeah. we don't, we're not going to explain it to you. If you want to see, go look at it. You can go to Nick Robinson. Yeah, his, Twitter, his Twitter is Babylonian. Yeah. Babylonian. Yeah, Babylonian. Oh, Babylonian. Yeah. Babylonian. B A B Y L O N I A N. Yeah. That's it's just from Polygon. Yeah. It's amazing. I've yeah. never, I just, even in getting into, the, like, the fact that, like, there are physical barriers to world exploration, like the island, right? But even the desert. Uh, yeah. And it just, the, the, way they had or the mountain sorry like in the first area when you go up there and it's too cold for you as well yeah, yeah. and they don't tell you like oh you should do x and y to survive here or whatever sure. it's just like this constantly unfolding world well, where you know it's, i'm sorry go ahead. No, no no i mean we did this documentary on noclip like three weeks back about mystery right and like yeah. it's it's like amazing that we did it right before this game came out because we basically had like Derek Hugh made spelunky jonathan Lowe did the witness mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. jim crawford made frog fractions talking about how you design a game where you respect the player's intelligence and allow them to uncover things for themselves. And one of the things that Derek talked about was how in the first Zelda, and I, again, this is I hadn't played these games, so it was educative for me. In the first Zelda, when you wanted to find those hidden dungeons, you just put bombs on special parts of the walls, right? Yeah, and then yeah. it's, do, 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 and it yep. opens up, right? In Zelda 3, there was cracks in the walls. Mm -hmm. And like that is basically a microcosm for the way in which like modern games have turned into handholdy experiences. And they can be fun, but you've got games like Assassin's Creed, right? You basically have the UI telling you what to do. So you can almost play this game with just losing the map. They have a game like Zelda, which is basically not even done anything that crazy. It's just gone back to the way we used to play games in the eighties, where they did not yep. have this sort of handholdy thing. And that was the thing that I, I, after we were done with the review and progress of Mass Effect last week, that was the thing I was like, oh fuck, I meant to bring that up. Is the fact that I saw someone on Twitter uh, tweet out after playing uh, after playing Zelda, Mass Effect feels ten years old. Mm, and right. the fact that, and once he said it, I was like, oh yeah, totally, because it, it is. Zelda's like, I respect your intelligence. Mm. And Mass Effect's like, we're going to tell you a story. There's been this murder on this thing. Go here and find the body. <laughs> right. The body is a giant star on your map. You go there, you scan the body. It's like, all right, now go find his gun. It's a giant star. You go there, you scan. Mm. Like, there's no, like, Zelda's literally like, yeah, if you want to get in that town, there's a guy that wanders around yeah. see you. And you're like, wait, what the <laughs> fuck does that mean? Right. Like, what do you want me yeah. to do? But it's uh, and yeah, and I think that coupled with the fact that there is so much to do means that when you hit those roadblocks, it's yeah. fine. It's like yeah. I'm gonna go do something else. Yeah. And by pure like osmosis in this world, I'm going to find that information mm -hmm. to then get me into that. City. Lucy O'Brien put up a thing the other day. It was just like she has this. She's like it was a screenshot from her phone of just like my phone is filled with things like this, and it was just a conversation bubble of like if you do this, you can find that person. But whatever. Bye. And, and I right. think all of that is super key because uh, when it comes to Zelda. Comparing the the specifically Zelda One, Link to the Past, right, and then Breath of the Wild here, I think that Zelda One, classic game, mm. no one will ever you know fight that at mm. all. However, I do think that part of the magic of that game was the conversations people had in real yep. life, yep. yeah, and it was like, a, oh, how do I do this? And someone else just figured out, oh, if you put a bomb here, there's a secret. Right. But like the game didn't tell you that, and I think that's bullshit. Like I yeah. think that it, it's that's it's too open. It's just, there's no way 
that you should have known. How would you know that this put a bomb pixel here? here. Yeah, yeah. It's like, and it, but it's like it's, that pixel looks no different than any other pixel. Yep, yep, so yep. linked to the past, having the cracks, mm. I think, is a is a way to like, all right, cool. This at least is teaching you a language of what you're supposed to know. I think the Breath of the Wild is kind of the perfect evolution of both of those, right. where it has the openness of the first Zelda, but it's all logical. So, oh, it's too cold. I'm shivering. Right. I need to get hot. How can I get hot? Oh, if I wore warmer clothes. Right. You know, or like uh, it's it's all type things like that where it's like, oh, man, I need to figure out how to shock something. I, I probably need to use electricity yeah. and something. You're right. So magnetic. And, that, and that's like the cracks, right, where they are giving you the, the, the puzzle elements for you to piece it together. I think you need to have that bomb placed on a random wall just once or you need to think that that's possible. Sure. Because if you think that rules. that's possible then anything's possible. Yes. And Zelda's world feels like a world in which I'm un- I'm learning so much about what's going on here, but it still feels like there's so much to learn. And Derek also told, you know, there's that old thing about the, why Zelda was made. It was a uh, Miyamoto was walking around that forest and mm-hmm. he f- came across a cave, right? And he's like, wow, like I discovered this cave. The story ends there. He doesn't talk about what was in the cave. It's not about what's in the cave. Sex. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> condoms. <laughs> condoms as far as Always the eye condoms. can see. Just like rows of them. It's 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 about the mystery. It's like the magic trick, right? If the magic trick, if the solution to the trick was better than the trick, they would have told you about the solution. Mm. They don't. They tell you about the trick. And now what what's cool well, about Zelda perfect. is that that element of mystery, it's an intangible thing. We're not talking about figuring all this stuff out. We're excited because we don't know everything. Mm. And for people I also feel who are in their 30s, who were playing video games for a while, sorry, you're younger than us. This similar thing, right? That's rare. Yeah, and I think that's why Zelda's really. I mean, today playing on the stream, right? Kevin and I got to the uh, shrine with the constellations, and it's like, look at this, look at the constellations, and it was that shut the chat. Because uh, we're playing on Twitch, right. and it I've was not come like, across that. That sounds we're amazing. fucking wondering, either, like, yeah. what the fuck do we need to do here? But and it's like back and forth. There's all this shit, and then like I pitch this idea, it doesn't work. P- Kevin pitched, it, and then Kevin finally was like, "What if we did?" I'm like, "Oh fuck, of course." And then I still didn't have my head completely <laughs> right? wrapped around it. I was like, "This is great." Yo, Zelda's got portal in it. It's got portal in it. The shrines are portal. Oh no, I get what you yeah, yeah, right? yeah. And then that's my favorite part. Oh right. man, the shrines. I I fucking I just love it so much. I, I now that I'm done with the game, a criticism I have is like, right. all right, did it need more dungeons? And I, I do right. think that it. I personally think that it could have used two more dungeons mm-hmm. and less shrines if that had to be the concession. How many shrines made. are there? There's 120. Jesus. Which right. is a lot of shrines. Which really yeah. makes you sad when you look at your screen. You're like, fuck, I yeah. have 46. Yeah. <laughs> and, just saying, and, and I'm not finding them easy anymore. Like, no. what the fuck are right. all these things? <laughs> I've loved so many of the shrines. There was a handful of duds, but overall, I'll give it to them because mm. even the duds tried something different. Right. Uh, and there's the minor test of strength and major test of strength or whatever. And it's like, yeah. there's, there's a couple too I'm many I'm skipping of those. all those major tests of strength. <laughs> You're like, nope. <laughs> no. but, but at the same time, I do feel like there is a reward. Those tend to be the shrines that were harder to get to. Yeah. So it was like getting to the shrine was the challenge. The, so the amount of shrines like I've award. walked in where I like busted my ass to get there and they're like, all right, cool, here it is. Yeah, oh, I love thanks, that. That's so good. Cool. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So I like that, but uh, I feel like the the dungeons are, are the real real meat of Zelda, you know? Right. Uh, but man, like the I just I love the the use of your the runes. That's what they're called. The yeah. the, the runes. Here they are in the beginning of the game. Master right. these things yeah. because you can be fucking creative and do whatever you want. Every puzzle is going to use these things. The amount of times I'm in, it, I'm in one of these shrines and I'm just like, I must not have. Nope, that's not the answer. You have everything at your disposal right now to beat this. Yeah. Figure it out. Yep. It's yeah. great. And so many games don't do that. They keep their like master stroke to the end. It reminded me of Half-Life 2 where it's like, no, here's the gravity gun. Yep. Like, we're going to tell you loads of different ways of using it. Like, it was the same with, with these runes, right? Yeah. Yep. It's like, here's like all these different ways to play it. Oh, that's so good. Yo, put your amiibo on this thing. So for the that. next topic, we're yeah. going to have a very special friend, Seb. Seb's coming from Snake from Pass, Digital. everybody. He's going to appear right there. We won't have been drinking. I'll put on a sweatshirt. We'll all shift Wait, over. Right. Don't do it. You're don't breaking don't reality. Don't we'll get this off. Time is broken. Go support Danny O'Dwyer over at patreon.com slash noclip. No, slash Danny O'Dwyer. Slash Danny yeah, O'Dwyer. Because it's not just noclip. I'm also bringing back my old op-ed show Ooh. real soon, too. Ooh. Awesome. So, yeah, Thanks forward. for doing this, Danny. We'll get Pleasure as ever. That. Great to have you. Great to, to be here. Let's do another a topic with Seb. Let's do it. Hey, Seb, why don't you just appear where I'm sitting? Hope you enjoyed that episode of Kind of Funny Games Cast. For more Kind of Funny Games content, click right there to subscribe. For more just fun content like The Morning Show, click right there to subscribe to Kind of Funny. Or support us on Patreon here, or check out some videos there.
Give me a little wiggle. 